silent giant has entered our solar system. It drifts through the black like a ghost ship, glowing faintly against the darkness, ignoring the pull of the sun itself. It has no right to exist. No rock, no comet, no natural object behaves like this. And yet, there it is. Its name is 3i slash ATLAS, the third known interstellar object ever detected. But to some of the brightest minds on Earth, it might be something more. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb has a phrase for what we're seeing. This is how a mothership behaves. For centuries, comets have been known as the sky's wanderers, icy relics from the outer reaches of our system that occasionally grace our skies with a bright, glowing tail. They're predictable, natural, and fragile, melting and fragmenting as they near the sun. But 3i slash ATLAS is not one of them. This object, streaking in from beyond our solar system, refuses to act like a comet at all. It's losing hundreds of pounds of mass every second as the sun's heat boils off its surface. By every physical law we know, it should be changing course, drifting, reacting like a rocket under its own exhaust. And yet, it doesn't. It moves as if nothing is happening, completely steady, completely indifferent. Avi Loeb ran the numbers. For 3 i slash atlas to stay on course despite such massive outgassing, it would have to be unimaginably heavy, over 33 billion tons, with a body at least three miles wide. That's roughly the width of Manhattan Island. Nothing like it has ever been seen. Compared to the previous interstellar visitor, Borisov, a comet barely the size of a football field, Atlas is a megastructure, a city-sized mountain of something alien. Statistically, objects of this scale shouldn't exist in the inter stellar medium. Space between the stars is too sparse, too empty, to create something this massive naturally. Yet here it is, gliding silently through our backyard. NASA scientists are about to get their best look yet. As it passes near Mars, it will come within 18 million miles of the red planet, close enough for the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to turn its ultra-precise high-rise camera toward it. With a resolution of just 30 centimeters per pixel, even a single point of light could reveal the true scale of its surface. If that image shows a reflection reflective structured body instead of a rough rock, it could rewrite everything we think we know about interstellar travel. Because according to Loeb, there simply isn't enough raw material between the stars to build natural rocks of this size so frequently. But the size is just one part of the mystery. The real puzzle lies in what it's made of. When scientists analyzed the faint dust cloud surrounding 3i slash ATLAS, they found something unexpected, nickel. By itself, that's not shocking. But what's missing is even stranger. There's no iron. In the natural universe, nickel and iron are cosmic twins, born together in the hearts of dying stars, found together in meteorites, asteroids, and comets. To find nickel without iron makes no sense, unless it's not natural. Here on Earth, when we separate nickel from iron, it's almost always for one reason, technology. Pure or alloyed nickel is a hallmark of advanced manufacturing. It's used in jet engines, electronics, and spacecraft. Nature mixes them, machines separate them. Loeb points out this unsettling detail. A cloud rich in nickel but barren of iron sounds less like the debris of a natural comet and more like the exhaust or worn-off plating of a constructed object. And then there's the tail, the single feature that should confirm its identity as a comet but instead throws everything into question. Every comet we've ever seen grows a tail that streams away from the sun. Radiation pressure and solar wind push dust and gas behind it, always pointing opposite the sunlight. But 3i slash ATLAS didn't obey that rule. For months, telescopes observed a narrow beam of light extending in the wrong direction, forward toward the sun. It was 10 times longer than it was wide, like a spotlight shining ahead, a comet with a tail growing from its forehead. Loeb laughed when describing it, calling it the cosmic cat with its tail on its face. It's absurd, but that absurdity may be the biggest clue yet. Light from the object is also behaving strangely. It's showing extreme negative polarization, meaning the sunlight bouncing off it is organized in a way we've never seen before. Imagine light reflecting off a shiny road on a hot day. That's polarization. But the light from ATLAS is reversed, scattered in patterns that don't match any known natural dust or ice. Loeb believes this may be directly connected to that forward-facing glow. Perhaps the way light interacts with an engineered surface, or even an active propulsion field. Whatever it is, it's not what comets do. Put all this together. A city-sized object, heavier than 30 billion tons, shedding industrial-grade nickel, glowing in the wrong direction, and refusing to be moved by its own outgassing. 
Any one of those traits would be strange. Together, they're impossible to ignore. And this impossible object seems to come from a very familiar place. In 1977, at the Big Ear Radio Telescope in Ohio, a researcher named Jerry Eamon recorded something he could hardly believe, a powerful, narrow-band radio signal from deep space, lasting 72 seconds. So perfect, so structured, that he circled it on the printout and wrote a single word beside it, W-O-W. -W. The signal never repeated, never returned. For decades, it stood as one of the greatest mysteries in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. When Loeb plotted the inbound trajectory of 3I-ATLAS and compared it with the region of sky where the WOW signal originated, he was stunned. The two directions were nearly identical, less than 9 degrees apart. The odds that two completely unrelated cosmic phenomena would emerge from the same tiny patch of sky by coincidence? Just 6 tenths of 1%. If that connection is real, it changes everything. The WOW signal might not have come from a distant stationary source at all. It could have come from an approaching traveler, this traveler, a probe that once called home and then went silent. If 3i slash ATLAS is indeed the source, it means we're not looking at debris or even a passive relic. We're looking at something that once transmitted, something that can send a message. Loeb has urged radio observatories around the world to listen again, to point their dishes at ATLAS and see if it's still speaking. So far, nothing has been detected, but the search has only just begun, and the timing of its journey adds another layer of suspicion. Its closest approach to the sun happens on October 29th. That's when its path curves nearest our star, the point where gravity can sling it onto a new trajectory. But here's the problem. During that time, Earth will be on the opposite side of the sun. Our own star will block our view completely. We won't see it, won't track it, won't know what it's doing. It's the perfect moment for an object to change direction or disappear entirely. Loeb poses a chilling question. What if it emerges from behind the sun on a totally new course? What if it turns toward us? He says, if that happens, markets will crash overnight. Governments would scramble. It would be proof that this is not a natural body. It would be proof of control, proof of intent. No one can say whether that will happen, but the timing feels almost deliberate. To come so close to the sun, precisely when Earth can't see, seems too convenient for coincidence. Was it planned, a maneuver, or just cosmic irony? For Loeb, this isn't just about curiosity anymore. It's about preparation. He spent years warning that the universe may already be interacting with us in ways we don't yet understand. He calls 3I-ATLAS a potential black swan event, something with an extremely low probability but world-changing consequences. He compares humanity's reaction to ants living beside a highway. To those ants, the rumble of a passing motorcycle would be incomprehensible. They'd see a shadow, feel a vibration, and then it's gone. They could never imagine the machine, the rider, or the civilization behind it. To us, he says, a visiting probe might look just as mysterious. Imagine that, our entire civilization watching the sky like those ants, staring up at something far beyond our comprehension. We might detect its light, its heat, maybe even its trail of metal dust, but never understand its purpose. We wouldn't know if it's peaceful, curious, or entirely indifferent. That's why Loeb started the Galileo Project, an initiative dedicated to studying interstellar visitors, not with speculation, but with data. His team has built three new observatories across the United States in Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, and Nevada. Each is equipped with ultra-sensitive cameras, radar, and software designed to track unidentified aerial phenomena. Their mission isn't to find flying saucers, it's to identify the small, silent scouts that could accompany something larger. Because if Atlas really is a mothership, Loeb warns, it might not be traveling alone. He believes the object could be releasing smaller probes, tiny autonomous devices designed to explore the planets of our solar system. Some might already be here. The Galileo Project is now watching the skies not for the obvious, but for the subtle. Anomalous motion, strange glints, patterns of light too controlled to be random. The search has only just begun. Meanwhile, the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, a next-generation telescope being built in Chile, will soon begin scanning the entire sky every few nights. When it comes online, it's expected to find a new interstellar object every few months. We are entering an era when visitors from other stars will no longer be rare. But Loeb warns, most will be rocks, some might not be. If one of them turns out to be a machine, he says, all bets are off. Gravity no longer predicts its path. 
equations no longer tell us where it's going. We'll be facing the unknown, for real. And yet, despite the danger, Loeb sees hope. He believes that contact, whether direct or indirect, could be the event that finally unites humanity. For all our borders, wars, and rivalries, a single undeniable sign of life beyond Earth could change everything overnight. Suddenly, we'd see ourselves for what we truly are, one species on a small, fragile world. The lines on our maps would fade. The conflicts that divide us would feel meaningless. The universe has a way of putting human ego into perspective. But there's another possibility, one far less comforting. What if this isn't first contact? What if it's surveillance? What if they've been here before, quietly watching, waiting, learning? The WOW signal in 1977, Umuamua in 2017, Borisov in 2019, and now 3 i slash atlas in 2025. A pattern is emerging, a rhythm in cosmic time. Four strange messengers, each more mysterious than the last, each one teaching us that our solar system isn't as isolated as we once believed. Loeb says we are being tested, not by aliens, but by our own curiosity. Will we be brave enough to confront what the data tells us, even if it points towards something we're afraid to admit? For centuries, humanity has looked up and asked if we're alone. Maybe the better question is, are we ready not to be? As 3i slash ATLAS moves toward its hidden encounter with the sun, telescopes around the world are trained on it. The data streams in, the numbers fluctuate, and every new observation deepens the mystery. If it emerges from the sun's glare unchanged, we may still be dealing with the strangest natural object ever found. But if it alters its path, or worse, vanishes, then the age of denial will be over. And if, months later, small objects start appearing in our skies, slow, deliberate, metallic, then perhaps the mothership theory will no longer be science fiction. We stand at the edge of a revelation. In the coming months, the truth about 3i slash ATLAS will unfold. Whether it's just a frozen comet or the first undeniable sign of non-human technology, it has already done something extraordinary. It has forced us to look up again. It has forced us to question. For generations, we have stared into the stars, searching for meaning. Maybe, at last, the stars are staring back. So, what do you believe? Is 3 I slash ATLAS a comet, a cosmic accident, or a carefully built machine drifting silently between worlds? Could it be the same voice that whispered across space nearly 50 years ago? The one that made an astronomer write, wow? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more mysteries of the universe. Because sometimes, the truth isn't out there waiting to be found. Sometimes, it's already here passing quietly through our solar system, watching, waiting, and reminding us that we are not alone. But what if this isn't the end of the story? What if 3, I slash ATLAS is only the opening act in something much larger, a silent message written across the sky, waiting for us to notice? In the weeks following its solar passage, the world's observatories will face a critical moment. Every telescope, radar dish, and satellite will be watching the region of space where the object should reappear. If it comes back exactly where predicted, Skeptics will breathe easy, but if it doesn't, if it's off course by even a fraction of a degree, then the conversation changes forever. Loeb believes that such a deviation would be the cosmic equivalent of a handshake. It would be the moment when the laws of physics give way to intention. He often compares it to watching a drifting bottle in the ocean suddenly change direction against the current. At that instant, you know something inside it is alive. A controlled trajectory would mean propulsion, and propulsion means technology. That single observation would confirm that humanity has just witnessed the passage of an extraterrestrial craft. But Loeb also warns against panic. In his view, discovery doesn't have to mean danger. A civilization capable of crossing interstellar space would have technological power beyond comprehension. If they meant harm, there would be no warning. Instead, he sees this as an invitation to grow up as a species. The universe may be far older and wiser than we imagine. And maybe, just maybe, it has been watching to see when we're ready to listen. In the aftermath, Loeb has proposed something bold, a cosmic embassy, a neutral global initiative to represent humanity in the event of confirmed extraterrestrial contact. Not a military task force, but a scientific and philosophical council, a group that could speak for all of us if the universe ever says hello. For now, it's just an idea, but ideas are how humanity has always prepared for the impossible. 
As 3i slash ATLAS continues its journey, fading into the cold beyond, one thing is certain. It has already changed us. It's reminded us that discovery begins with doubt and that curiosity is our most powerful form of courage. Whether it's a comet or a craft, it's forcing us to look beyond fear, to think bigger than nations, and to wonder what other lights might be gliding silently through the dark, waiting for us to finally notice. Because one day, when we least expect it, something out there will notice us back.